All right, welcome curious people, DIYers, and people bored at 3 a.m. to this official design review of the new 18-volt subcompact impact driver from Rigid. First thing you might be wondering is what the heck is a design review? Is that like a product review or an unboxing? Well, yes and no. A design review comes from the engineering world and basically means to evaluate a design from a very detailed technical perspective. The next thing you might be wondering is who the hell are you to critique the designs by successful companies like Rigid? Well, first of all, I have a YouTube channel, okay? And it's got like a couple subscribers, so there's that. Also, I'm a professional product design engineer and have been for more than a decade designing successful products from concept to sunset. So when I say official, all I mean is I do engineer products professionally, but I am not affiliated with Rigid or any other ratings agency. I bought this with my own money and have had no contact with any one associated with Rigid. So with that in mind, I hope you enjoy this quick teardown and design review. Goodness gracious, look how tiny that is. That, that's the whole motor, guys. This thing, this black right here is the entire motor. Right, so let's get into it. So you can pause screen if you want to see the list of features and specs that it has. There's that. There's the model number. And let's get to it. So the main pur purpose, why this is a new product, is it's called a subcompact. Kind of like a car, but not. And the whole point is they've shrunk down the length of the typical 18-volt size impact uh, head from about this long to about this long. So that means you can get it in, into tighter, tighter spaces, uh, and it becomes overall more usable. Uh, and in order to accomplish that, they have gone to brushless technology. So, and the whole point of that is you can pack more power density into a brushless motor than you can the equivalently sized brushed version. There is uh, something a little bit to say about longevity with a brushless motor. They do last longer because they don't really have m many as many moving parts to wear out. They don't have brushes. They only have ball bearings, basically, at either end of the motor. Uh, but normally, you never get to the end of, the, of a life of a brushed motor anyway, so that's probably not really going to be a factor. The main fact reason to go to a brushless system is to be able to squeeze your power density down into a smaller package. So, with that being said, let's, uh, let's start looking into some details. From the outside, this is very interesting. So this, this method of securing the drivetrain to the rest of the unit, this four screw method, that is actually reminiscent of some of the cheapest designs that I have reviewed. Um, if you've seen previous reviews, you might remember a HyperTuff. Uh, brand, which was a, a red hyper, hyper tough impact driver from Walmart. Basically the cheapest, crappiest impact driver that I've had on the channel. It was just garbage in every way. But it was the only one that secured the drivetrain like this. Now, I'm not saying that this is that that's a cheaper design. I'm just saying it's interesting to note. And I'm guessing that the reason they did that was because it let them uh, save some space that normally there was the housing, the rigid housing was wrapping around the motor and the drivetrain. And so that helped them save a little bit of that plastic thickness uh, and probably also helped them contain the torque, the torque of this brushless motor, which is probably a little bit higher than, than the one, uh, than the brushed kind that they had before. Also, because this is a higher torque motor, I'm guessing when I get in here that it's going to have one reduction, one planetary gear set reduction as opposed to two, which is what almost every other 18 volt 
impact driver has. It has two reductions because the torque of the, mo of the brush motor is not very high, so they need to go through two sets of, of amplifying that torque in the drivetrain to get you to a torque on the end. So with this design, this is a, probably a single single reduction, and that's exactly what the HyperTuff was. Even though it wasn't brushless, it was just a low quality, low power brushed motor. So it just dealt, you just had to deal with the fact that you had less torque. But because this motor has more torque, they've been able to, to squeeze the same amount of output torque into a shorter package by having advanced motor technology, uh, which is probably why they can they can have this type because this type of mounting because it's more conducive to a single a single reduction but rigid doesn't have to sacrifice like the hypertuff does so from the outside guys pretty pretty standard or uh, rigid quality very good texture Th this is really nice this uh this fine stippling right here that it's it's more fine than old older designs this is you know kind of like a golf golf ball size holes and and these are really fine so that texture is really nice uh, this is a over molded a by injection design these housing parts are by injected with these the hard pot plastic gets injected into the mold first and then the soft rubber gets injected second after these slides move out of the way and that's how you get basically a part with two very distinct properties, but appears as one part because it was actually manufactured and chemically combined together in the same mold. So it's a 3 8 drive. Yeah, so uh, there's, there's all that information if you wanted to know. And I think we're gonna get into it. I can't really tell anything from the outside. Well, one thing is Hear that? So, that is definitely metal, which is also reminiscent of the HyperTuff, which again, metal doesn't necessarily mean good quality or bad quality, it's all about how it's executed, and I'm gonna try and, and give you some insight into how well these parts have been executed, but these look very similar finishes right here, very similar, but plastic, metal. All right, let's get into it. All right, so first thing is, yep, this is an injection molded part. So even though it looks like metal, it's actually plastic. And let's see if it tells us exactly what it is. Let's see, it's kind of, there you go. Yep, P, uh, PA6 Glassville 30. So that is polyamide or nylon six with 30% glass content. So, pretty, pretty rigid part. Glass-filled nylon is uh, is pretty much the standard when you want to make a rigid part. There's also a nice little bearing mount in here that is soft and flexible, and so that's going to keep some of that impact and uh, shocks of the drivetrain from translating into the user's hand so that's that's pretty cool yeah probably a, a, a TPE which is just a fancy way of saying a, a, a meltable a meltable rubber so that that looks pretty serious oh that's a cent that's a centri centrifugal cooling fan so it sucks it down the axis and blows it out the outside sucks it in blows it out I think you guys got it. That's pretty cool, and that's that's a serious piece of kit right there. That's uh, that's like a, a cast cast piece of aluminum. So that's uh, definitely never seen anything that substantial on on an impact driver of any brand. And again, brushless motors have higher power density, and so when you have higher power density, that means you have higher heat concentration, and so you need to get rid of that heat. Uh, a lot 
a lot more efficiently and a lot more effectively. And so you've seen that the, uh, the engineers at Rigid have definitely put in plenty of capacity for cooling. That's, that's, that's serious. That's like something that would be, be on a compressor, an air compressor that generates a lot of heat. So. All right. So again, typical rigid, rigid, good quality. Look at all those, those little, little ribs that they put in there that they didn't have to just to get every ounce of stiffness out of this thing that they possibly could everywhere that there isn't mating, mating components that go up in there, they've ribbed it. That's a sign of a really good uh, conceptual design from the, you know, the, the, the design engineer making this, in, designing this in a computer. He put in all the effort everywhere where he should have uh, to make this uh, as, as sturdy of a part as you can. So, and again, this is, I'm expecting this to be polyamide glass filled uh, nylon. Yep, six with TPS SEBS on the outside. Hard, hard plastic skeleton with over molded polymer, soft polymer on the outside. And, oh, that's a built in th uh, brass threaded insert. All right, so. Yes, a, a new feature that these had is is modes, um, and that's probably because a brushed brushless motors are inherently programmable. You have to have programming to run a brushless motor. You can't you can't just attach it to a battery. And you see that circuit board right there, because you you have to have a circuit board to run a brushless brushless motor. And yeah, this is all. Goodness gracious, look how tiny that is. That, that's the whole motor, guys. This thing, this black right here is the entire motor. That's how much power density they fit. Look look at this 12 volt. This, this is just a, a, a 12 volt. And just look how, how, like that motor is like that big. That is the power of technology right there, guys. I, c I cannot believe how tiny that is and yeah because this this is the right here is the inside of here is the impacting mechanism and yeah so let's get this apart and look at this the, the reduction the gear reduction is probably right here and then so let's see if we can take a look at that. Okay. Yep. Yep. So there's there's the the impacting mechanism, pretty standard uh, machined machined uh, aluminum, probably cast first and then post machined. Pretty standard. This this is where where the new stuff is. Okay. So. Check this out, guys. The, the entire drive mechanism, motor and transmission, is that big. That's it. So this the, the motor and transmission in this is smaller than just the motor of this older brushed technology. The motor starts about there. The cooling fan is like right there. And then the, the motor ends right about here. And then... Do dual stage gearbox reduction, and then this is an impact, so it just has the you know the chuck after that. But that is insane, guys. What the, the just the the march of technology on from something that that used to take up you know two to three times the space, and so we can see there's the single reduction. Let's see if uh, yeah. So as I as I turn the motor, you can see the planetaries. It's a single planetary reduction, and those are some big gears in there. I've never, never seen gears that the the little planet gears that rotate around the the sun, ring gear, planet gear, and then sun gear in the in the very middle. And I've never seen planet gears that big on any any battery or batterized drill. 
So that that is pretty cool. And it, you, it's hard to explain to you, you can't feel it, but you can feel each individual pole. And this thing has a lot of them. Uh, I'd, I'd say at least at least 60 and maybe more like 90 or 120 but but that that is pretty kick-ass that's the entire reason that this product exists is this this design right here and so can you see those the wire wrappings in there those are pretty thick but that the entire power of this is happening right in there and that in that half an inch thick by maybe one and three quarter inch thick that's just just astounding to me so all right well now that I've got lots of goo all over my hands let's uh, let's take take a look at the rest of this um, this is an improvement from what I remember on rigids having this uh, potted potted distinct module here for the uh, battery contacts is this looks looks very high quality it has both a mechanical protection for the circuit board the battery uh, regulating circuit board that's down here and a very uh, very uh, well done potting job that keeps it protected from moisture and and possibly impact yep yeah, so it's very that 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 potting compound is actually pretty soft. If you can see, see me poking into it. Yeah, it's not hard. So the soft potting compound acts like a giant a giant airbag for the sensitive electronics that's in there, and keeps it keeps it safe from both moisture and impact. So yeah, got got a nice big. Nice big light right there. I do like the ones that come from from down here because they, they it's got a better angle on whatever you're shooting at. The ones that are right here they always make a shadow from from the uh, diameter of the of the drivetrain. Although if this one had it up here, it probably wouldn't because it is so short that it might not even cast a shadow. So, and uh, like a, a, back to what I was saying before, this is a has modes because a, a brushless motor is programmable uh, you can program it to have whatever level of power you want based off of the software that you put inside the circuit board and so it's got got three modes and a a mode I'm not sure what those are but uh, but probably just different different levels of power so yeah that's uh that's really the the whole point of this product is right right there. Everything else is pretty pretty standard. Well designed plastics, well designed um, uh, tooling, and and engineering all around. So I hope you guys like this. Uh, if you did, if you want to see more rigid products, let me know. If you want to see anything else that you have in your mind, uh, want me to review it in the way that I did on this particular product. Uh, shoot me a comment down below. Let me know. Let me. Did you did you hate it? Did you think it was stupid? Let me know what you thought was stupid uh, down below. Uh, if you liked it, give me a like. If you really liked it, give me a subscribe. I try to do these once every two weeks, uh, maybe once a week uh, if I'm uh, if I'm feeling peckish. And uh, so you'll get notified if you hit that subscribe button and if you hit the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. So hope you all enjoyed it. I will see you guys next time.